morning, everyone. We'll get started in another minute or two here. Just let a few more people join in. Okay, hey, it's 9.02, I think. Let's go ahead and get started, and more people will join in. They'll be in. Oh, there's one more right now. Cool. All right, well, <laughs> hello. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nick Smars. I'm the online uh, lessons coordinator for Robert M. Sides. So thank you, everyone, for joining in. And I will turn it over in just a sec here to our guitar teacher, Jeff, and he will take it away. Um, I'm going to keep everybody muted for now, and I think if you uh, have any questions as we're going along, just go ahead and type them in the chat, and I'll keep an eye on what's coming through. And then if a lot of people are kind of asking the same thing, uh, at the end we'll take a few minutes and I'll ask Jeff a bunch of stuff. <laughs> And I think that's about it. I don't have anything else right now. Um, oh, yeah, one, one other thing I did mean to say is it's going to be the same link for all four. So the link that you got that got you in here right now, keep that. If you lose it, I can send it to you again. But it'll be the same one uh, for all the lessons. So, Jeff, I think if you're ready, you can go ahead. Cool. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I can't hear you, but you can, hopefully can hear me. Um, so if you, if there's any problem hearing, uh, let Nick know, and maybe he can uh, help you out or something like that. Um, but hopefully everybody can hear. Uh, so I can see some people have a guitar, which is awesome. And uh, the first thing we want to try to do is... Uh, Kind of learn about the guitar, like what the parts are, and then we gotta have, we're gonna have to get this in tune, and that's gonna be kind of tricky over the internet, but we'll do the best we can. Um, all of you, regardless whether you have an acoustic or an electric, um, obviously have a guitar with six strings on it. The uh, strings uh, are numbered backwards away from us when we hold it by the right-handed way of holding it is to have the neck 
on your left hand side and the body of the guitar is on your right hand side. Um, occasionally somebody wants to play left handed, that's fine. Uh, if you really want to do that, uh, there's a couple different ways that can happen. Um, if you want to play left handed, some people just take a right handed guitar and turn it upside down. There's a few well, very, fairly well known guitar players who do that. Um, other people uh, take the, a right-handed guitar and they play it left-handed, but they also restring it backwards. Um, so uh, I don't see anybody doing that, but just in case somebody has that question, um, I would always advise probably learning to play it the con more conventional way, just because you won't have any problems going to a, a book and looking at drawings and pictures and stuff like that. And uh, in the long run, each hand has its own little thing to do, and I don't know that each either hand is easier than the other. It's just they, they have their own roles to play. Um, so anyway, as you hold the guitar, uh, the string closest to you, which is the big string, and uh, if you if it's in a uh, if you have a guitar and it's actually in tune, uh, that string should be the lowest, deepest pitch that you hear on the guitar when you pluck it, like so. And I imagine if all of you play that string and you can hear me and you play your string like that at home, some of you are probably going to notice that your note doesn't sound at all like mine. And that's why we have to tune this stuff so that we can get it in tune. And there's a couple of things we can do to actually uh, help with all that in terms of uh, like this gadget up here on, uh, that I have. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a little tuner there. Uh, so anyway, that's the that's the biggest string and the deepest pitch, and we call that the sixth string. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense because it's the first one you see when you look down at the guitar, but it's called the sixth string. And then they kind of go in order oh, uh, away from you. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. So uh, anytime anybody ever talks about the sixth string on the guitar, they're always talking about this one. Anytime they talk about the first string, they're always talking about the one on the bottom. Uh, that's not always the most logical layout of things, but that's how it works. So uh, I, I'm not sure who decided to do it that way, but they even do it that way on a violin. The one closest to you is the fourth string, the one farthest away is the first string. Um, each string has a name, uh, uh, what we can call, it's a note name, but we can think of it as a letter name, and it's E, A, D, G, B, and E. Uh, that's obviously very very good to remember because those are the names of the notes that the guitar is actually tuned to but there's a little sentence there's quite a few of them actually but there's a, little, a sentence that people can say that makes that a little bit easier to remember uh, and that would be um, Eddie ate dynamite good by Eddie okay and as weird as that is if you remember that you'll probably never forget it so Eddie Eight, dynamite, good, by Eddie. The first letter of each of those words is the name of the note that that string gets tuned to. That brings up a problem with this. It's not really a problem, but something that we have to make sure we remember is that this string is Eddie. Eight, dynamite, good, by Eddie. So we've got two strings that are E. Obviously, one of them's thicker, one of them's thinner. One of them, the thick one is the lowest, deepest pitch, like I said, string number six, and the highest one is, uh, the, uh, the, the smallest one is the highest pitch, uh, and the first string. It's really important if, uh, for example, if you, go to, if you went to the music store and you said, I need you to tune my guitar because my sixth string really sounds out of tune, then they, they know you're talking about the sixth string. Or if you say, my first string is really out of tune, they know you're talking about the first string. So that the number system helps us identify exactly which string and then also uh, knowing uh, Eddie A Dynamite Goodbye Eddie um, lets us know the name of the pitch the string gets tuned to. Um, before we get started tuning it, uh, we need to what we need to do is pluck the string. Some people like to use their thumb like this and just kind of pluck each string. All six strings like that. Uh, that's probably not the best way to play in the long run. Uh, when you do play with your fingers, 
uh, generally speaking, there's a little more to it than just plucking with the thumb all the time. Um, the, uh, the, uh, unless you're Wes Montgomery, then <laughs> that type of stuff. Uh, he does that, but um, most of the time there's a little bit, little bit more detailed method than just using your thumb for everything, where they mix the fingers in with everything. Uh, the other method uh, is with a pick, uh, and you can see this is a little bit smaller than a normal pick that I that I use. Um, this is kind of a normal size pick. It's a little bit bigger. It has a point on the end. Different picks are made of different materials. Uh, some are made of plastic. Some are made of a synthetic material called Tortex, which is supposed to simulate the 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 sound of a of a a tortoise shell pick, which I guess is has been illegal in the United States for many, many years to use tortoise shell for picks. But anyway, um, that's a different type of material. Uh, some are made of nylon. This is made of nylon. And, and the different materials give you different sounds and just a different feel um, for everything. And um, we're going to hold the pick, I don't know if you can see that, in between my thumb and my first finger like that. I don't, I know it's, when I was, when I was uh, nine years old and got my first guitar, I held it like this. I know I did. This is the only way I could hold on to the thing because your hands are really small and stuff. And I kind of learned to play like that. And after a while, uh, it started to really cause a lot of problems in there. So I kind of had to change after playing for quite a few years, I had to change into the more conventional method. And it definitely helps keep things a little bit more relaxed. Um, that's not going to make a be a big deal when we're trying to tune the guitar, but I, I kind of figure uh, the best way to tune the guitar is actually to play it using the technique you're going to use when you actually play it. Uh, some people go like this when they tune the guitar, they pound on it, and then when they play for real, it, they wonder why it sounds out of tune. So we want to make sure that when we tune it, we're pretty much using the same technique as when, um, when we're actually playing. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this tuner work but we'll try it here. I'm going to turn it on. This is a good old snark tuner. It's a clip-on tuner. It's like a closed pin type arrangement here and you put it on the headstock of the guitar up here just clip it on anywhere and uh, what it does is it senses the vibration of the guitar through the headstock and scientifically kind of calculates what note you're playing and whether it's actually in tune or not. Now this is where knowing uh, E-A-D-G-B-E, Eddie 8 Dynoite, Goodbye Eddie. Uh, that's where knowing that is very, very helpful. Because if I'm going to make one of my strings go really far out of tune right now, and uh, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if you can see this, but the tuner's telling me that I'm playing a D sharp. And so I hear this a lot from people. They say, something's wrong with my tuner. <laughs> it's not working right. And uh, it is. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to. It's telling me that I'm really, really, really out of tune. So I've got to get that back to E, and I've got to be able to see it. So like it's now it's now it says E. Like I said, I don't know if you can you can tell what it says, uh, how well that picks that up, but it's saying that I'm on E, which is what I want. And then uh, different tuners have different methods of telling you that, but this one has like a little line right in the center and I want to I want to make sure that when I pluck that string it goes right to the line in the center. For those of you who may not have a uh, 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 tuner, as soon as I find one, there's the Fender company puts this one out for your phone um, it doesn't, it, it's, uh, unfortunately it's like, it, it is a phone, so what happens is it picks up all, all kinds of background noise, like I have a heater running over here and I guess it sort of picks up the heater a little bit, but, um, if I pluck the, the string, I don't know, if can, can everybody, I don't know if you can see that or not, but, um, it tells me what note I'm playing and it's green if it's in tune, so they, they do make tuners for your phone as well. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to play this note for a little while, this E note, and um, when you turn your gear, uh, you want to figure out which string 
you have to turn. If you have an acoustic guitar, it'll be the one closest to you on the top side of the headstock. Um, and what you're going to want to do is one way will make it get closer to being in tune, and one way is going to make it get farther away from being in tune. You might, and I always tell people, don't. Uh, we don't want to do this. <laughs> right? It's like sort of the seasick uh, thing. Um, but generally speaking, now some of you just got a guitar. Maybe, maybe we just pulled it out of the box or whatever. So who knows? Uh, it, it might be fairly, pretty far out of tune or whatever. But under normal circumstances, you really don't ever have to turn these more than a quarter turn one way or a quarter turn another way. Uh, in terms of if it gets bumped or something like that, it's not going to go that far out of tune. So um, let me get my string in tune here, and then I'm just going to play it for a little while, and everybody else can play this. This is the sixth string. This is the Eddie string. The, the you know Eddie eight dynamite goodbye Eddie. This is the low Eddie here. When I say low, I mean deepest one. So if everybody wants to play that for a little while, if uh, you know, just sort of check your tuning. If you do have an electronic tuner and you want to put it on the headstock, that's great. Um, the one uh, aspect of, of doing that is, like I said, you have to kind of be close to being in tune first before it actually tells you that it's an E. So, so everybody got that? Give me a thumbs up or something if you got it. <laughs> cool. Uh, next, we're going to go on to the fifth string. Uh, the fifth string, of course, is Eddie 8. That's A. Um, and so I'm going to play that. Just hopefully everybody's somewhat close to that. Is that good? Everybody cool with that? Awesome. Uh, then Dynamite is the fourth string. string is uh, good. And the second string is by. First string, we have another Eddie, that's why we have to know the numbers. This is the first string Eddie. Okay, so hopefully everybody's somewhat close to being in tune um, so that when, when I play something here, hopefully it'll kind of sound like what you're doing uh, at home. Um, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I hear this a lot sometimes. People, I ask people, is your guitar in tune? And they'll go like this. And uh, I, so I got to point out, that's not really a good way of checking your tuning. Uh, go like that. That's kind of like pounding on all the keys on a, on a piano. <laughs> it's just going like this. It's not going to really sound like anything except all the notes and stuff. So if you really want to check your, your tuning on the guitar, um, the best way is to use a tuner, of course. If you want to check what it sounds like, you maybe play a chord, which we're going to get into some chords and stuff, but maybe play a chord. If it's in tune, that chord should sound good. If it sounds like this, like that, um, you know, it's going to sound kind of, kind of strange. Um, so uh, it, it's always good to check your tuning with something you know is supposed to sound like a piece of music or something like that rather than strumming all the strings open. So, uh, everybody, uh, that sound good to everybody? Everybody kind of have their guitar cool and everything? How many of you guys, uh, I know I can't, we can't hear anything, but uh, anybody had lots of experience playing guitar? Anybody played for years or anything? Anybody had it in school? Okay, a couple of you had it in school. Seventh grade, right? Yeah. I don't know. Cool. Um, who's never played a musical instrument ever, ever before? Okay. First time, huh? And uh, So, uh, this will be kind of a cool... Uh, 
cool experience for everybody. Um, the one thing you're going to have happen if you've never played before, uh, if never played guitar before, is you're probably going to notice your fingers are going to get a little sore after playing for a little while. Um, I, one thing I always tell people is take a little break, uh, go do something else, come back a little bit later. Um, practicing for eight hours in one day is probably not advisable when you're first starting because your fingers are going to end up really painful, painfully sore, and um, at that point, uh, obviously you're not going to be able to practice at all, and that's not going to do you any good. So I think it's always kind of kind of helpful to um, uh, uh, you know practice a little bit, take a little break, come back a little bit later. Um, who, who, when we play notes on the guitar, like what we just did, we tuned the six strings. Um, we played those strings in what we call open, which is without putting any fingers on them. And that's, uh, that's kind of universal among stringed instruments too. When you play a, a note on the violin without putting your finger on it, they call it an open string, or on a banjo or a mandolin or anything. Um, so anyway, that's what we call an open string. So we're going to start with the first string open. Now remember that six, five, four, three, two, one. So when I say the first string, we're talking about the one on the bottom, closest to the floor, the highest pitch. This is Eddie Eight Dynamite Goodbye Eddie. This is the one on the bottom. We always call it the first string. Like I said, it doesn't always seem to make the most logical sense, but that's the name that's given to it. Um, when you pick, uh, with if you're using a pick. You want to pick approximately, this is an approximate thing, halfway in between the uh, end of the fingerboard, which is right here, and the bridge of the guitar, which is right here. This is approximate, but halfway. If, you, if you're off by a little bit, it's not a big deal, um, but approximately halfway, like that. What I don't want to do is I don't want to strum up over the fretboard. Um, I have an old guitar, I don't have it out right now, but I have an old guitar that, that um, whoever owned it before me did a lot of playing up there and the wood in between the frets is kind of dished out and looks weird. Um, it's a great sounding guitar, maybe that's something to do with it, I don't know, but uh, you don't want to play up there because it, it will it will eventually end up you know dishing out the wood and stuff and scratches it up and stuff. Um, the main reason that we want to play there is because that's where we get the best sound. We're going to let everybody sort of experiment with this. If I pluck up by the end of the fingerboard, I get kind of a, a big, thicker sound, like so, Not on any string, but we're working on the first string right now. If I pluck back right next to the bridge, I get kind of a real twangy sound, which I think most people recognize is not exactly what we want as a normal guitar sound. Um, when I pluck in the middle, I kind of get a little bit of both. It's like sort of blended together. It's a thicker enough string, but it's got enough attack to it that it sounds pretty good. Now, the main reason we want to go there is because of the way, how easy it is to play. If I pluck up here by the end of the fingerboard, and I try to play down and up with my pick like this, the string wobbles around a lot. And it's especially noticeable if I did it on the sixth string wobbles around all over the place. It's really hard to do that. If I pluck back about halfway, like right here, it's a lot easier. And things like that, you know, it makes it a lot easier to do that. Now, not that we're going to be doing that a lot, but that's why we want to get used to playing at this spot, is so that when we do have to do things like that, we don't have to adjust anything. It's already taken care of. So, the best place for you to play is, is about halfway in between the end of the fingerboard and the bridge of the guitar. About it's also true on the electric. I have an electric here. I'll show you in a second. Um, that you know, approximately the same place, but halfway between the fingerboard, end of the fingerboard, and and the uh, and the and the bridge of the guitar. So we're if we're playing an open string, we don't have to put any finger on it. So then the other option is, what do we do with this hand, this left hand? These metal pieces that run underneath the strings, the whole length of the guitar, are called your frets. Um, this white thing up at the end of your guitar, a lot, most people, uh, uh, that's that's all. It's it's called the nut of the guitar. On occasionally, on some guitars, they have a fret right next to the nut. I mean, like like a sixteenth of an inch away. 
that is called a zero fret, but I don't think many guitars have those anymore. That was an, an old way that they could uh, uh, manufacture guitars and they could do it really, really quickly and cheaply. It didn't always work that well, but um, they did it. But anyway, if there's one right next to the nut, it's called the zero fret, but most guitars don't have that. So the this is the first fret. It's the first one after the, you know, the, like I said, this thing up here, it's, sometimes it's black um, and made out of graphite. Uh, most of them are made out of plastic. Um, it's called the nut. The first one up here is called the first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. We can keep going. Um, most of you have little dots on the guitar. Um, some some guitars have them on the side. I don't know if you can see that, but I have like little dots on the side. And some people have dots on the fingerboard. Some people have snowflakes on the fingerboard. Some of them are shark tooth. Some of them are blocks. Some they're all kinds of patterns, but um, they're called position markers. You can call them dots, whatever you want to call them. And uh, it's almost always on on the guitar. It's kind of universal that those dots are going to be three five, seven, and nine. And then there's two dots at number 12. So three, five, seven, nine, and then 12. Okay. That's just a quick way. If somebody says play a note at the seventh fret, I can look at those dots and I can tell where I am. I don't have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or anything like that. For what we're doing today, we're going to be down in this area. So we probably don't really need those, but, but it's going to come in handy later on. Uh, to know what fret we're actually playing. Like I said, the 12th fret, the one with two dots, that's kind of universal. Um, and it might have a different, it might have a block, it might have uh, uh, some kind of fancy design there, but on the side, it's probably going to be two dots. Okay, so three, five, seven, nine, 12. If any of you ever play another instrument like a banjo or a mandolin, that's not true. They don't have one at fret 9, they have one at fret 10. I don't really know why they've chosen to do it that way, that's just the way they do it. But anyway, on a guitar, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 12. If some of you have a Yamaha guitar, Yamaha seems to be one company that on some models does not put a dot at fret 3. Okay. Some other guitars, some fancy guitars like a Gibson, Gibson Super 400 for example, has a block at fret one. Well, nobody needs a block at fret one. I hope everybody can kind of see where fret one is, right? So some of this is more decorative and fancy than it is out of necessity. But definitely when you get up in this area, it's helpful to know where fret seven is and fret nine, so you don't have to actually sit there and count. Okay? Sorry about that long-winded definition, but sooner or later people want to know where they are, and you tell somebody to play the seventh fret, they're like, one, two, and then you tell them to play the ninth fret, and they start counting again, and the dots make it a lot easier, you know. Um, so anyway, on the first string, uh, at the first fret, we're going to use the first finger. Now, by the way, fingering, this is really easy. How many fingers am I holding up? One. That's my first finger. How many fingers am I holding up? Two. That's my second. How many fingers am I holding up? Three. That's my third. How many fingers am I holding up? Four. That's my fourth. Um, this is not a finger. This is your thumb. If anybody play piano here, anybody ever have piano lessons? Because when they teach you on piano, this is called finger number one. You're going to have to just totally forget all about that, <laughs> okay? On all str stringed instruments, I think on violin and, and banjo and mandolin, this is finger number one. It's just that way. So if you've had any piano training, forget all about it. It doesn't, doesn't work that way anymore. So one, two, three, four. So when we play a note at the first fret, I want to press my first finger onto the string, and I want to push the string down so it makes contact with the metal fret. Um, and you notice that I'm, right here's the first fret. I'm actually on, when I look at it, on my left-hand side of the metal fret. And so when you look at your finger, your finger should be on the left hand side of the metal fret, okay? And uh, we'll let that go for a little bit. I'll play it a couple times in a row and everybody, if your guitars are in tune and you're playing the note, that's what it should sound like, okay? Everybody's note sound like that? Thumbs up? Maybe thumbs down, I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, cool. Now the real test is to, if we can play the open string and then the first fret like that, we can play open, which is no finger, and then the first finger, and then open, and then first finger. We're just kind of getting used to um, like so, right? And you should hear a difference there, right? And of course with this hand, I'm still plucking just the first string at that point. Now, did anybody know, was any, whenever anybody pressed down at the first fret, did anybody get a, like a buzzy note? Did it sound kind of buzzy and weird and stuff? Um, usually that's kind of a, a, a couple people that'll happen with. There's a couple reasons why that could happen, some of which are in our control, some are not. Um, hopefully it's one that's in our control. What we would need to do is press down with the first finger and I need to be as close to the first fret the metal part as I possibly can be without actually being on top of it. As soon as I get on top of the metal fret I'm going to create some really weird sounds. But if I press right next to it I get a clear sound like that. If I move my finger too far that way, too far to the away from the fret, it's still on my left hand side but if I move it too far away it's going to start to get that buzzy type of sound to it. You can hear it's got a little bit of weird stuff there, right? I don't, know, I don't know how well that comes through, but maybe, hopefully. If I get really far away from it, it sounds plunky like that. Which is kind of a unique, unique sound, but not really one we'll do what we're after, okay? If I put it right on top of the fret, it sounds very dull. Like that. So the best place for me to keep my finger is on, well, like I said, on my left hand side when I look at it, right next to the fret. Okay? So so far we did open and first finger. Now we're going to go to the second finger. We're still on the first string, but we're going to use the second finger. And it's going to be right next to the second fret, but still on the first string. Um, like so. Okay? And the same rules, the, the same guidelines kind of apply. I'm going to be, here's my second fret, I'm going to have my second finger on my left hand side of the metal fret when I look at it. Okay? Like so. And hopefully it sounds kind of clear. Um, if it doesn't, maybe I got my finger too far away, like that. And it kind of has a little bit of what they call rattle or buzz. If I get too far away, it starts really sounding bad. Okay? Like not clear, fuzzy, weird stuff, right? If you get right next to it, hopefully it comes out nice and clear. If I'm right on top of it, it sounds really dull. So the best place is right next to it. So that, that kind of stuff's in my control. Um, so, so far now we have open, one, and two. We're going to go one more. We're going to go three, okay? I use my third finger. And it's going to be right next to the third fret, again on my left hand side, as I look at it, uh, as close as I can get without actually being on top of the fret, okay? And then, for those of you who are really brave, we're going to try the fourth finger. Everybody hates using the fourth finger, but, because it's weak. I, I saw this thing in a magazine one time, somebody said, guitar players don't like using their fourth finger because it's weak and it's weak because they don't use it and they don't use it because it's weak and it's weak because they don't use it and you keep going in a circle like this until you just decide you know what I'm gonna learn how to use my pinky you know um, so it'll, it'll never be as strong as like your second finger uh, obviously so I mean that's almost physically impossible but it definitely comes in handy for playing certain things uh, where you're gonna need to stretch you know, need that pinky to do that kind of stuff. Um, not that we're going to do any of that, but in case you want to, that's why you learn to do it. Okay, so we got the whole thing here is open, one, two, three, and four. Okay, and a uh, really kind of cool warm-up exercise is, is to do that um, maybe um, Maybe like four times on each string. So you, you know, you kind of do it. Open one, two, three, and four. Open one, two, three, and four. Okay. Now 
Now I'm not saying you're supposed to do it that fast. What what I'm just want to show you how how it works. It's like I just go over and over and over it. And what we're listening for is we're listening for can we get a good sound out of that? Like can we get a clear sound? And we don't want it to sound like you know that's not doing me any good because I don't want to I don't want to sound like that a year from now or two years from now. So I want to practice sounding the way I, I want to sound all the time. So. I, I'm going to go slower and make sure I get a, a, a good clear sound out of it. There's one um, sort of little trick that I want to be careful your tuner doesn't fall apart. <laughs> my little pad came off my snark, it always does, but anyway. Um, uh, there's one little trick um, that you can do it, you don't have to do this, it's, but you can. It doesn't hurt anything. Some things it makes it a little bit easier. Um, is when you play the first fret and you go to the second fret, notice that I can keep my first finger on the guitar, like so. It doesn't make any difference at all. I can keep it there, I can take it off. If I was going back and forth between these two notes, the second fret and the first fret, like so, it's a lot easier to leave this finger on because I don't, you know, why why move two fingers? Now I'm moving two fingers. This way I'm moving one. So when I play that exercise, that warm-up exercise, I can finish up without having all four fingers on there. That tends to hurt people's hands a little bit, which we're going to get into that in a second. It tends to hurt people's hands a little bit to try to stretch your fingers out, and so there's a few things we can do that really um, help. You probably still feel like you're stretching your fingers out, but there's a few things we can do that kind of help as far as hand position goes. Um, one thing that happens sometimes when people uh, play is we got We want to make sure that we're using all four fingers. Um, this sounds about the same, doesn't it? it? Should sound the same. Everybody agree that sounds about the same. Uh, but here I'm moving around, and which is okay, I guess there's nothing wrong with moving around except it's a lot of wasted energy, and it's a lot of, it's going to cause a lot of inaccuracy later. So everybody says, when I play this note, why do I have to use my second finger? You don't have to. If you try all four fingers, it sounds exactly the same, no matter what finger I use. Okay? You can see that. Hopefully hear that. Um, Hopefully, tell it, it sounds exactly the same. Uh, so, it obviously the choice of finger here doesn't have anything to do with what it sounds like. The choice of finger has to do with how easy is it for me to play other things, you know, uh, to get from one string to another, or get from one fret to another, or to play a song or anything like that. You know, that's what we need to do that for. Um, so anyway, in case anybody's wondering, that's why fingering gets to be helpful. Uh, when you guys did this, one, two, three, four, who felt like their hand was really being stretched to the max? <laughs> okay. Uh, here's the here's the part that that um, you know you kind of work through this a, a lot when you're first starting out. It's just how you hold the guitar, how you hold things is really important. If you want to play baseball, how you hold the bat is really important in terms of being successful, right? Um, if you're playing soccer, how you kick the ball, how you actually do it, what part of your foot you use uh, is, is obviously really, really important as far as how successful you are. Uh, not, as a, not as a soccer player, but just on, on each individual, like, if I kick the ball, where's it going to go? If I do it right, I have a much better chance of succeeding and doing what I want. And the same is true uh, with musical instruments, too. I mean, they teach you how to play a piano, they tell you how to curl your fingers around or how, how straight to keep your fingers and all that kind of stuff. So, how we hold the guitar is really, really important. The first thing that I do is you'll notice that my guitar neck is going up in the air. And sometimes, depending on our sitting position, uh, that's kind of difficult, but it definitely doesn't work very well like this. Now, um, there's, I think it's like, like some people play like this. They, they do it like because it looks cool, I guess. And if you're into the Ramones, who, who knows who the Ramones are? Anybody know who the Ramones are? Blitzkrieg, no, Nick knows who they are, I know who they are. <laughs> They're an old punk rock band. Punk rock bands like to, they like to put their guitars down by their knees, and, and they play like that. And I don't know how they ever made it work, but it, it definitely worked. 
for them. But uh, for most people, keeping the guitar about waist level is probably good. And you want to get the guitar neck going up in the air like so. If I get the neck going up in the air, then the next thing is I want to take my thumb like this. I don't want to put it behind the neck, right in the center of the neck in the back. I don't want to have it hanging out over the top. I'm going to show you some exceptions to that rule, but overall, I want to keep it back there. And then when I play this exercise, one, two, three, four, you notice my wrist is not, I mean, it's bent a slight bit like that, but it's not, it's not like this. If I do it like this, I'm definitely going to end up with some medical problems. Uh, and I, I wouldn't ever, I've had a few, and I would never wish that on anyone. That is probably one of the most painful things that can ever happen to somebody, uh, is to have that kind of stuff happen to your wrist. Uh, fortunately, it hasn't happened for a number of years now. But anyway, that's not a good thing. So you want to try to keep the wrist nice and straight. When I do that, also the palm of my hand is pretty far away from the guitar neck. And notice I've got a lot of space in between there. So I'm not, I'm not going like this. Uh, and, you know, when, so keeping my thumb behind the neck isn't just keeping it behind the neck so nobody can see it. It's actually keeping it behind the neck in this kind of fashion. So when we go thumbs up like that, that's pretty much how your thumb should be on the back of the neck. Just like your fingers are moving around though, depending on what you're playing, your thumb moves around as well. And sometimes it's here, sometimes it's going like that, depending on different chords. And I see, I think it was, I think it's Casey. Casey, you look like you know some guitar chords, because I've seen you doing some stuff there. It seems, or your picture's like really small, but I've seen you doing some things. So it looks like you know, know some chords, which is awesome. And so that's probably one of the biggest reasons why your thumb is going to change. When you play a certain chord and you go to a different chord, your thumb needs to move to support that. So I don't want to give anybody the impression that all this stuff is static and just done the same exact way every single time. Because that's not true. It does move around uh, for you. So anyway, you can go do that exercise on all six strings. But I would say... You don't have to do that fast or anything, but do it like four times on each string. By the time you get to the sixth string, it's going to seem like, wow, I have to really reach here, you know? Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a warm-up exercise to get your muscles working, to get your fingers working, to listen for a clear sound, that kind of stuff. Cool? You guys ready to play something that sounds... Oh, your thumb. There are some exceptions to this, and you'll see me do this, and, and you know, it's one of those things where... If we were in the same room, you'd probably say, your thumb's over the top of the neck. <laughs> and, and, yep, I do that a lot. I, you can play chords with your thumb. Not... Uh, so I can do stuff with, with, with my thumb where I actually play some notes with my thumb and then the other fingers are doing other things. So... But that's not something we're going to be bothered with right now. But in case you ever wonder, that's why you see people doing this with their thumb, because they can play really cool with some chords like that. So you can use them to play chords. Everybody got that? I'm going to share a screen. Uh, so I think, I'm, I w I think I will be like really small off in the corner, but what you're mostly going to see here is my screen. And uh, some of you might know uh, what some of this is. Um, uh, definitely everybody's going to recognize some of it, and they're going to say, this looks like music. So um, there we go. There's your, uh, this is uh, music. I, I, uh, I have sent this to Nick. He can email this to anybody who needs it. Anybody who's on a computer, um, I can send this to you through the chat screen. Um, anybody that's on a phone or an iPad probably can't get this through the chat thing. So um, Nick can email this to you so that you know you don't have to memorize all this right now. Um, for most people, when they look at this top part here, I don't know if you can see where my cursor is right now, um, but you can see that. I'm waiting, there's a little writing utensil that I'm waiting for. <laughs> there we go. This thing right here is called the treble clef. And probably most of you have had music class in school, not necessarily guitar, but you've probably had music class. 
And so when you see stuff like that, you might be like, I know what that is. That looks like music. You may not know how to read it. You may not know how to identify any of the notes, but you definitely know it looks like music. Um, we've all seen mu what music looks like. Um, it's the part down below here. It's it has the tab written in the beginning. If you ever hear it, this is strictly for guitar. Um, you don't say this to a, a trumpet player who has no clue what tabs are. Uh, a piano player has no idea what tab is. And this term, it's, it's uh, a nickname for something called tablature. Tablature is something that's been around since the Renaissance period. They used to write it for lute. Uh, as a matter of fact, if, you're a, a, if, you're, um, a, if you specialize in playing lute today, uh, many, much of the music that you have, if you get the old style Renaissance type music, it's going to still be written in lute tablature. Uh, tablature is a way that tells us where our fingers will play. It doesn't tell us timing. It doesn't tell us what note we're playing. But it does tell us where to put our fingers. And it also tells us which string to play just by how it's written. But again, it doesn't tell us what to play or how, or, or how long its duration is. It just tells us where to put our fingers. So we don't know what note this is. We don't know whether it's a quarter and a half note, whole note, except that we've got the music notation above it. So at the top, this note, this quarter note right here, if you, does any of you know how to read music, that quarter note corresponds with this number down below it, okay? And likewise, each one of these. So the ones at the top correspond with the ones at the bottom, and vice versa. Um, sometimes when you go on the uh, uh, internet, you might find stuff that's just tablature. It doesn't even have quarter notes. And there are kind of ways they sort of fake quarter notes and everything like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to play this scale. Everybody knows what scales are, and we'll explain what they, what they do in a second. The first thing we need to learn about tablature is that each line on this tablature represents one of the strings on your guitar. Now this is where it's really important again to know Eddie 8 Dynamite Goodbye Eddie and also 654321, okay? Because tablature is never written any other way. If it is, it's written incorrectly and you should run away from it as quickly as you can. Uh, I'm trying to write this down here, but I guess everybody can see my screen, right? Okay, just want to make sure. I can't tell what anybody can see, so I'm, I'm hoping everybody can see it. Okay, so the top line of this tablature is the first string on my guitar, which is the one on the bottom. I know it's, everybody's going to say, but that's upside down. I'm like, this is just the way they write it. So the first string on the bottom of my guitar is the top line of the staff, and I'll show you another another way you can look at it. Uh, in a second. Then it goes two, three, four, five, and six. So the sixth string is the bottom line of the tablature, and the sixth string on my guitar is the one closest to me. So six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay? Uh, for many people, that's kind of weird because they say, well, it's kind of upside down, so you could always think of it this way if you want. You could, you know, I can hold my guitar up against the computer monitor and say, well, the first string's on the top, the sixth string's on the bottom. Okay? Or Another way, if I have the tablature and if I print it out and I place it in front of me on, on, on like on my lap and I place it in front of me, the tablature corresponds with what I'm looking at on the guitar. It, it's that way. So it's only because we're looking at it right in front of us versus the guitar this way that it seems kind of upside down. The first note, the first thing we have to play here is that note I just circled. I hope that, you, you guys can tell when I circle stuff, right? Yes? No? Cool. Okay. Um, so the first number there is a three. And the number that's written here indicates what fret we're going to be playing. Uh, and, and for right now, what finger we're going to use, too. As we said, it doesn't really matter what finger you use. It doesn't affect the sound. It just affects how easily we'll be able to play the whole thing in uh, without moving around and putting a lot of effort into playing all over the place. So the first note here is the third fret on the fifth string. And I can tell that because it's a number three. That tells me the fret number. And then it's written on the line here for the fifth string. So I want to play the third fret on the fifth string, just like this. Okay? 
And again, I want to keep my finger right next to the fret and uh, as close to the fret as I can on, on my left hand side, like so. And uh, I want to pluck just that one string, just the fifth string with my pick while I hold my finger down and that's what that note should sound like. Now again, I can use any finger I want, doesn't change the sound, but when I go to play this whole thing, it's going to be a lot easier if I use my third finger, it's a lot less moving around, okay? The next note we're going to play is this number zero here. Now zero, we talked about open strings earlier. Open string is when you put no finger on the string, and so a zero kind of represents nothing, or no finger. So in this case, it's written on the fourth string line. You can see it's the, the six, five, and four. So this is the fourth string open, like so. Okay. Next we go to the next note here is the two. Again, it's also written on the fourth string. Uh, line, so it's on the same line. So we're going to pluck the same string here with the pick. This is the fourth string, but I'm going to put my second finger at the second fret, like so. And again, it doesn't matter what finger I use, except it's going to be a lot easier if I use my second finger. A lot less moving around. Okay. And uh, I'm going to keep that finger there because the next note I'm going to play is the third fret. Now this is where people start thinking, well, it's a lot easier if I just move this finger up, right? But it's actually going to be a little bit easier if you, in the long run, if you use a different finger and go like that. And you notice I keep the other, the second finger down right now. You don't have to. It doesn't change the sound at all. It's just one less thing to do. Uh, so I played the second fret and then the third fret here on the fourth string. Okay? Everybody got that so far? Kind of all right, maybe. <laughs> okay, that's the halfway point. That's Do, Re, Mi, Fa. So that sounds like this. Okay. And we're going to show you something kind of cool a little bit later on that you can do with that. The next note is the third string open. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to pluck the third string, and it's a zero. Uh, so again, it's an open string, so that's the third string open. Second fret, third string, that's with the second finger. Open second string, so I'm going to pluck the second string here with my pick. Open, no finger. And then finally the last one is the first fret, second string. That's one a lot, a lot of people get mixed up on and they put it over on the first string. I'm not sure why. It's just the excitement of getting done with this scale, right? <laughs> Nobody likes scales, do they? But um, hopefully we're going to show you something here in a second that makes the sound, shows you how scales work and actually are kind of fun. Um, Tony, that's, the, that's what the last note is. So when you're done with this whole thing, you put it all together, uh, it's going to be Do, Re, Mi, Fa, so, la, ti, do. Okay? Uh, you don't have to play it that fast, but that's, and that's that identifiable sound that, that you probably had to sing back in like kindergarten or first grade when they teach you that song. The names of the notes there, by the way, are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Um, that's what makes it the key of C. Every, inst every instrument, whether you play playing on piano, whether you play playing on trumpet, whether you play playing on a saxophone or a violin or a uh, marimba or anything, C major scales, always those notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. So it doesn't matter what instrument you play, those are always the notes of a C major scale. The only thing we're doing is learning how to do it on the guitar, okay? By the way, that we call that the ascending formula scale because the notes go up in pitch, they climb, they get higher. When we play it in reverse, we get what's called the descending part of the scale. And the descending part of the scale actually sounds like the Christmas carol, Joy to the World. Now 
one reason it's kind of helpful to know what these things sound like is um, because in the long run, if I play a wrong note, I want to know, hey, I played a wrong note. And so if I, go, I can say, wait a minute, that must be wrong, right? Because it doesn't sound like joy to the world at all. So it's always a, a pretty important thing is to make sure that you listen to what you sound like and, and all that kind of thing. Okay, uh, everyone wants to know why we're learning scales. Now, the problem is every, everybody probably has their own favorite band. Some people like Blink-182, some people like the Ramones, some people like Billie Eilish, some people like, I don't know who, you know, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, um, Nirvana, Green Day, all kinds of stuff, right? So we could probably find millions of songs that do this. So. It, uh, but this is a song I think everybody's probably heard before and um, if you look at the, this beginning of the the uh, song, this Lean On Me by Bill Withers, notice the first four notes that you play in here uh, are the first four notes of the C major scale and then the next four notes are the C major scale descending just in reverse. So this, this is why people learn scales, because they make songs out of them. This also brings up something kind of interesting about uh, tablature, is if you want to play a note twice in a row, they're going to write the note twice in a row. So you can see that the first note here, the third fret, is written at the beginning, and then it's also written over here. Um, the other thing that's kind of tricky about um, tablature is it does, once again it doesn't really tell you how long to hold each note it doesn't tell you the duration it doesn't tell us whether they're doing half notes quarter notes or anything so recognize those okay so that's the beginning of the song uh, the second line you can't see the tablature for it I didn't scroll down far enough but um, it, it's the second part of the song I'm sure everybody's probably heard that melody before, right? Um, I see Casey's taking a picture of it. I think Nick has a, the PDF. He can send it to you, so, but it's cool to have a picture of it. But, um, it, you know, if, he'll send you the PDF as well. Um, so, you know, hopefully the, the Lean On Me thing is a, a, hopefully a little more fun than just playing the scale, but at the same time, it kind of gives you the idea of, of, you know, what people use scales for. Does anybody have any questions? Let's see, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Somebody, your, your tuning isn't right. <laughs> I see that. Um, if, you have a, if you have an electronic tuner, uh, it really does help. You still have to know Eddie 8 Dynamite Goodbye Eddie. There's, um, this video is going to be available so Nick can send everybody the link for it. So you can go back and review anything you need to review. Um, I know at the beginning we kind of have to explain a lot of things. Some people know which string is which already, and some people have no idea which string is which, so uh, it does go kind of slow, but you can always go back and find that spot in, in the video where it actually shows you where I actually played the notes. And you can turn your gears, like I said, go kind of slow. When you first get a new guitar and you pull it out of the box, sometimes the strings are completely loose, and so you actually have to tighten them up a little bit. So make sure you don't go real, real fast. If you turn too fast when you're tightening, you could actually snap a string. Um, the weird thing is, actually, believe it or not, if you get the strings too tight and then you loosen them, you can actually break a string when you're loosening it, too. And there's some scientific reasons why that happens, but uh, it's called metal fatigue. But uh, anyway, that can happen as well. Uh, so... Uh, you know, I see Al, somebody named Alex has a problem with tuning. So, like I said, that, that's one of the best ways you can do it. You can watch the video, or, um, you know, if you have an electronic tuner, that'll kind of help you. Anybody else have any questions? The, yeah, um, Nick, Nick has the PDF that I just shared my screen with. 
he has that and he he can email it to you or maybe provide a link for you it may be with the link with the, the video I'm not sure how that where that stuff's gonna be but there's gonna be a link with the video and also with the PDF that that had the scale and also Bill Withers song on it the Lee song. Uh, anybody else it's a practice so next week we're gonna probably work on maybe some chords and stuff so you guys can play something that actually sounds like you know, something like that or whatever you know um, so any other questions I can't think of all these people and only, only like two questions <laughs> so Casey I saw you playing some chords like like how many chords did do you have did you have lessons already or or do you just have it in school or did it did it on the phone cool okay just that and so anyway um any other questions at all cool i guess i'll turn it back over to nick for maybe some goodbyes or whatever <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't I don't see any other questions. I think you covered everything for today pretty well. So I just put that uh, PDF in the chat so anyone who has an Android device or is on their computer, like a laptop or a desktop, can download it from there. But I'll email it out also with the link to the lesson. That'll be up for the next week and then after next Saturdays we'll change it over so that one will be up but if you want to review anything between now and then you can i will be at the same link and I think that's everything thanks Jeff yeah you're welcome we'll see you guys <laughs> see you next yeah, week we'll see you see you next week bye bye